So is artificial intelligence going to replace doctors? I don't think so, but there's only one way to find out. I'm gonna put ChatGPT to the test and see if it can diagnose a patient that I've seen in my GI clinic. I'm gonna give ChatGPT small pieces of information at a time, with of course small changes being made to protect the patient's identity, both from an anonymity perspective and HIPAA perspective. And then I'm gonna allow the AI to ask more questions and potentially guess at what the diagnosis might be. Just so you can follow along, I'm gonna say the diagnosis shortly, but if you wanna to try to guess it along with ChatGPT, just close your eyes and cover your ears for about the next five seconds. The diagnosis that this patient had is bile acid diarrhea. Now it's definitely not something I see every day in the GI clinic, but it's not incredibly rare. All right, so now it's time to see what ChatGPT can do. Let's go. Here we go. And feel free to think about what questions you'd be asking and try to guess the diagnosis yourself if I didn't just spoil it for you there. So this is a 40 year old woman with diarrhea. I'm gonna start broad and see what questions that it wants to ask. Okay, you can see these are all great questions. So he's getting a little bit carried away here. He's asking basically every question from a typical medical history and physical that you would ask, which is appropriate. That's what you should do if someone comes to your clinic with diarrhea. I'm gonna give him the answers to a few questions for now. I'll basically answer the first three to four questions and see what it thinks. So it's brown, loose, large volume, three to four times a day. It's been going on for five years. It's thinking a lot here. This is like really slow. If you haven't used ChatGPT, usually it answers a lot quicker than this. Such a polite AI. Good question. Triggers, nice, that's a really great question. That's a really good learning point for anyone out there who's looking for a career in healthcare or is a healthcare trainee. Triggers for symptoms are gonna give you a lot of information, as you'll see here, spoiler alert. Now these were really good specific questions at the beginning. As things went on, he started asking basically every question from a typical medical history again, which is reasonable. I keep calling ChatGPT a he, probably shouldn't do that. Maybe that's what they want, but let's cut it off here and answer the first four to five questions. Okay. So it's worse after food, it hasn't worsened or improved in those five years, never seen a doctor, no meds, no prior medical diagnoses. The only real history is that she had her gallbladder removed five-ish years ago. All right, let's see here. Actually, no, this could be enough to guess it now. It's possible. Let's see what it thinks it is. You'd want more information in real life, but you know, this is a YouTube video. And this is sufficient to get the diagnosis. Wow, look at that. That's crazy. The first suggestion is 100% correct. For those of you who didn't hear me say it before, that first suggestion is 100% correct. Bile acid diarrhea is also called bile acid malabsorption. It causes diarrhea because the bile acids that don't get reabsorbed irritate the lining of the colon and prompt diarrhea. IBS, the second suggestion is a great thought too, but for me, this was classic for bile acid diarrhea. Let's see what it would do next. Thinking, thinking. You can see it suggests a lot of tests here, stool tests, blood tests, a colonoscopy maybe, all reasonable. Now, I personally wouldn't do a colonoscopy yet because there aren't too many red flag symptoms or alarm symptoms. That means like blood in the stool, symptoms at night that wake you up, weight loss, family history of cancer, anemia. These are all things that might make you worried for Crohn's or colon cancer, for example. Now, to be fair, I didn't give ChatGPT the answer to all of these potential alarm questions, but I know that there weren't any based on my questioning of this patient when it actually happened. So let's see what it says about a colonoscopy. It sounds just like a doctor hedging a little bit. And this is a big reason why AI can't replace doctors, at least for now, I guess, because this is a nuanced question. I think different doctors would even tell you different things in terms of if this specific patient with this history and this medical history needs a colonoscopy or not. Personally, I would not offer a colonoscopy right now. I would probably do stool tests, I would do blood tests, and I would maybe treat for bile acid diarrhea because the treatment is kind of like a diagnostic test because if you get better from a bile acid sequestrant, which takes up those extra bile acids and hopefully stops the irritation of the colon, that's gonna improve it and that's gonna tell us that probably bile acid diarrhea was the cause. If that doesn't work, or if any of the other tests that I do are abnormal, then I would offer a colonoscopy. But you'd be totally in the right to offer a patient a colonoscopy or recommend a colonoscopy in someone who's had chronic diarrhea for five years. Medicine is a lot of gray areas, and that's what AI, you know, has trouble with, reasonably so. Let's see what it would do if I confirm bile acid diarrhea. Okay, yeah, that test is right, but we don't really do that test in clinical practice. We just use the treatment, as you can see, bile acid sequestrant as option two here. You use that sort of as a diagnostic test because if you get better, that tells you bile acid diarrhea is probably the diagnosis. And you can see it suggests looking for other causes too, which is reasonable because you wanna make sure you're not missing something. So just treating with a bile acid sequestrant wouldn't be enough. You wanna do blood tests and stool tests at a minimum to make sure there's not signs of other inflammation because bile acid diarrhea shouldn't be causing inflammation. Great job, ChatGPT, you did it. Oh, so modest and risk averse, classic AI. So pretty impressive overall. I don't think we're ready to give ChatGPT a white coat just yet, but it's pretty impressive and it's a great tool to go along with medical training and medical reasoning. Comment below for any diseases you want me to try to test ChatGPT with next. I'd be curious to see if it can get like a really rare medical disease. But in the meantime, thank you for watching and please consider subscribing. Have a great day.